when we recruit like this, the people who are not getting considered are uh, deviators. People who, in different ways, deviate from, uh, from the norm. And the norm in most male-dominated businesses is white, middle-aged, heterosexual man, like me. Um, and a deviator can look like this. Um, this is a famous uh, man in Sweden. His name is Christer Lindarv. He's a drag queen artist, is the word. Um, he has gained quite a good reputation in mainstream Sweden. Uh, but I find it hard to picture him in this dress in a management boardroom. Um, and that's not because I'm prejudiced. Um, he, another deviator is my colleague, Andreas Bagwani, um, who he wouldn't be considered either. either. Um, not on the days when he looked like this, at least. He's a father of two, and his children loves to paint their nail, love to paint their nails. And he discovered that he thought that was kind of fun too. So he started doing it himself with them, but he was quite uh, rigid about uh, wiping that off before going to work. But one Monday, he find, found himself in a business uh, meeting, about to shake hands with a new uh, possible customer and discovered that his nails was still painted. And he shook inside, but decided it was just, the only thing he could do was to act along, play along. Uh, so he did. And uh, um, so once in a while, you can see him wearing nail polish. Um, and it doesn't make him the least less competent in what he's doing. But some customers or employers could miss out on this competence because they get too fixated on the nail polish. Yet another deviator is uh, Asha. This is Asha Omar. Uh, she's a friend of mine. Uh, she's lived in Malmö in Sweden for 22 years. Um, or she moved to Sweden for 20, 22 years ago. Um, she's been unemployed for large parts of this, of her life in Sweden. Um, and now she's not living in Sweden. Uh, she is acting, she's working uh, as a um, counselor directly under the Prime Minister of Somalia. Um, and this is a good example of how we, the norm, loses out on uh, when discriminating. Because um, a person who is considered to be one of the best minds of her country um, is not considered to uh, be able to hold uh, any position in Sweden. And who is missing out most here? Is it her or is it the society of Sweden? So, what is it that we get instead when we don't allow deviators? Well, this is um, a board. Um, and as you can see, they are quite homogenous. Um, it's a picture of the board of an exclusive golf club around Stockholm. Nowadays, you don't see pictures of boards in uh, large corporations. They used to be in their annual um, reports, but not anymore because it's too embarrassing to show what it really looks like. Um, this golf club doesn't have that problem with investors and uh, PR, so they can post this picture. And uh, this is not to say that there's anything wrong about these men. I'm sure they are good, solid, hardworking, honest men. Um, but man, one of my points uh, are that one of my points is that uh, who do we think is best to act and react in a diverse world? 
Is it this group of deviators or is it this homogeneous group? The homogeneous group will think that, well, we have it all figured out, or at least we have the network, we have the connections, we have the experience that we need to be in our business. And they probably do, because otherwise they wouldn't be making money. But the question to ask is, would we be even more successful if we were able to recruit and retain and promote talent that don't look like us? Uh, do we want diversity because we can gain from it? Because if we can see that, that we can gain from this, then we will actually be able to do something about it. If we only want a diverse group because we're supposed to, because it looks good or any more superficial reason, we will probably not be very successful in getting a more diverse group. And we often present these issues as it being a women's issue or an immigrant's issue or a black issue, like, like the problem is the women's problem or the blacks' problem or the immigrants' problem. Um, but one of our points is that, well, it certainly is a problem for underrepresented and discriminated groups. Um, but it's even more a problem for us belonging to the norm. Because we are losing out on things that we don't even know exist. Who is the biggest loser when a surgeon is driving a cab? Or when women in a male-dominated group keep almost all of their thoughts for themselves, if they do. Um, or in any group, it could be in a completely homogeneous group, if the group is dominated by one or two people and the rest of the group is sitting silent. We tend to think that those being very active are the ones who are really smart and have the best ideas. But once you get the silent ones to speak, you will notice that, oh, we were missing out on a lot of things here. <laughs>